All right, good morning, church. I'm so excited to share this morning. Let's look here at our screen, and let's see if we can relate to this guy. All right, let's see if we can relate to him. How dare she? I knew I would mess up. If only I had. Don't they like me? What if? How could this happen? If only I had, I should be. Anybody can relate to this guy? I sure can. You guys, there's not a time in our life where thoughts are not running through our mind. Good thoughts, bad thoughts, even silly thoughts and negative thoughts, right? We all have thoughts going through our mind. Even when we're trying to rest, we have thoughts constantly going through our mind. And as we can all agree in this last two years of COVID, we've had a lot of time to think, right? Actually, too much time to think. All that COVID isolation, right? We've had so much time to think. And God wants to do a miracle in our thought life. So I want to ask you, how is your inner dialogue? What are you thinking about? I love what Pastor Fred said. This is not a message for us. This is a message for you. I want to ask you, what are you thinking about? Well, I'm going to tell on myself a little bit. Have you ever received a text message from a friend and he or she didn't text you back right away? Well, I would have a tendency to create this storyline in my mind. And I would think to myself, I wonder why she didn't text me back. Is she okay? I wonder what happened. Maybe I said something. I, I probably did something that offended her. Maybe she's mad at me, right? And we go on with this whole storyline in our mind, and we make it up really thinking thoughts that aren't really accurate. And then a few minutes later, or maybe an hour later, or two hours later, you get a text, sorry, my phone died, right? But we went through this whole mental gymnastics, right? agonizing and anxious over what we think it could be, and it's not. This is the, what happens with our thoughts. So how would you describe your thoughts right now? Positive or negative? Healthy or unhealthy? Anxious or full of peace? God wants to do a transformation in our minds, and no matter what you answered, God has a plan today. I'm in faith that what God is going to speak to us, including myself, is going to minister to us and help us to renew our mind and transform our minds. So this morning, we're going to look at the story of a woman in the Bible who changed her inner dialogue. And as Pastor Jim said, she changed her thoughts, which changed her direction, which changed her destiny. Are you ready? Jesus, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you, God, for the power of the Word of God to change our life. And I specifically pray that the God of hope would fill us with hope in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we would overflow with hope to actually believe that our thoughts can be renewed. You know, God, what's going on in each, each individual in this room. You know the thoughts they think. You know the, the times when their thoughts are not healthy. And God, that some even in this room today are desperate. They need a transformation in their mind. And so, Holy Spirit, would you fill them with hope right now that you can do a work in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to go to a woman in the Bible in Mark 5, 25 through 29. And this is a woman who changed her inner dialogue, right, that changed the direction of her life. So here we are in Mark 25. Let's pick it up there. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she got worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his rope. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. So this woman here has been subject to bleeding for 12 years. 
Let's look back at this text, all right? This is, this is not good. This experience that she's going through is not good. And not only did she had this bleeding for 12 years, she also went to doctors at that time and suffered at the hands of doctors. But not only that, she had spent everything she had to pay them. And not only that, she didn't get any better, she got worse, right? All right, this is a desperate situation, all right? And also, in that time, if you had this condition, you were considered unclean by the law of, in her, in her law of her time, you were considered unclean, and many scholars believe she was probably divorced if she was married, she was banned from public worship, and she couldn't associate with society, which forced her into isolation, all right? So I want you to get this picture. I really want this to sink in with you, that this is a woman who is not uh, going through a situation that is easy. This is very, very difficult. Now, if I had, if I were to be honest, I would be struggling with negative thoughts after 12 days of a sickness. She was struggling for 12 years. This precious poor woman was not having a bad week, guys. She was having a bad decade, right? I mean, this is a, over a decade of her life where she's struggling with this. And have you ever thought, I wonder what she was thinking during that time? I wonder what her inner dialogue was like. Well, the Bible isn't doesn't tell us. It doesn't give us any clues of what she was thinking. But after the description I just gave you, I think it's pretty safe to say that she was struggling with her thoughts, right? She was desperate. Emotionally, she was tired. Physically, she was tired. And I bet her inner conversation went something like this. Why is this happening to me? I have lost all hope. What is wrong with me? My situation will never change. I will always be alone. Church, this is not just her battle. This is everybody's battle. We go through things in life, whether it be our childhood, whether it be current circumstances, very difficult, hard things in life, and they form an inner conversation, an inner dialogue in our life that can be negative, right, and can be toxic. And this is the battle that we all face. Cognitive neuroscientists say that every time we experience something positive or negative, we are forming a neural pathway for that thought. I'm sure you've heard this before. Dr. Carolyn Leaf said this, every time we think a thought that over and over again, it's easier to think that thought again. She said, when we have the same thought over and over, it becomes a pattern. Think of it like this. Imagine every thought that you have makes a little trench in your mind. And when you have that same thought again and again, the trench becomes bigger and deeper. All right, this is the way your brain works. Now, this is really good news when you're thinking pure thoughts and truthful thoughts, right? If you've got the word of God in your heart, if you're meditating on the word of God and you are saying that I am above and not beneath, I am an overcomer, I am changed by the blood of Jesus, that's making a trench in your brain. It's making a trench in your mind. It's growing deeper and deeper and deeper. And that thought is exploding in your mind. And you're like, I believe this, I believe this, right? But it's bad news if you're thinking negative, toxic thoughts. That's also forming trenches deeper and wider in your thought life, in your brain. So many times we can have thoughts. I'm sure you've experienced this. You've had thoughts, and you can just shrug it off and go, oh, no, no, that's, I'm not going to think that thought. But many times there's thoughts that we've experienced and we've had that we've had for years. Some of you here today, you've been thinking negative, toxic thoughts for years, and they've formed a deep trench in your brain, in your mind, right? But I want to give you hope today. I want the God of hope to fill you with all hope that God can change that, right? He can transform the way you think. So let's go back to the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And we're going to find out two things that we can do to transform our thought life. You ready? Two things we can do. All right, so again, she's desperate. She's been in this situation for 12 years. She's out of answers. She's out of hope. And then here we go 
in verse, starting in verse 27, she heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd, touched his robe, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. 12 years of bleeding and in one moment of time, the bleeding stopped. She was completely and totally healed. What made the difference? Well, she didn't hear the latest podcast on how to have positive thoughts and good vibes, right? She didn't go to the self-help seminar on how to like yourself, right? No, what did she hear? She heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. That's what made the difference in her thought life. It changed her inner conversation. Look at this, look back at this verse. It says, she thought to herself. The Amplified said she said to herself over and over again. She kept saying to herself, if I just touch his robe, I'm going to be healed. If I just touch his robe, I'm going to be healed. You guys, her inner conversation began to change. Why? She heard about Jesus. That was the difference maker. She heard about Jesus. And when her mind began to focus on Jesus, everything changed. Well, what'd she hear? All right. Many scholars think that maybe she wasn't even a Christian. I don't even think she was a Christian, right? She's probably an unbeliever. But she heard in her town, she heard the news going around that there was this man walking around preaching the gospel, laying hands on the sick and seeing him recover. Now, we all know him to be Jesus, who is God. But in her mind, maybe it's like she heard this man. He's laying on the sick. He's seen him recover. He's feeding the thousands. He's offering forgiveness. He's preaching the good news. He's, laying, he's seen the dead raised to life. She heard something about Jesus, and all of a sudden it filled her with hope, and her thoughts went from negative. You can imagine I would be negative too after 12 years of being sick and losing all I had and suffering. But she all of a sudden went she thought to herself, if I, if I just touch the edge of his robe, I'm going to be healed, right? See, when we're focused on the right thing, it changes our thinking. So the first point is to change our thinking, we need to change our focus. To change our thinking, we need to change our focus. Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind and keep focused on the things above, the heavenly things, not on the things of the earth, right? See, we can be focused on the wrong things. And when we're focused on the wrong things, our minds can be filled with negative thoughts, toxic thoughts, all right? So what are your thoughts telling you? I'm worthless. I'll never change. I'll never get close to God. My past disqualifies me. Let me ask you, but is that the gospel? Is that the gospel, right? Is that what Jesus says in his word, right? If you're focused on those thoughts, focused on your past circumstances, and I say that with all compassion because people, we've been through tough things in life, but Jesus she heard about Jesus, and that made all the difference. Sometimes our thoughts are telling us the wrong story because we're not focused on the real story. You see that? Sometimes your thoughts are telling you the wrong story because you're not focused on the real story. Didn't Jesus rise from the dead? Didn't Jesus do what he said he could do? Didn't he, in Isaiah, didn't it, it was prophesied of him that the Spirit of the Lord was on him because he's an, he's an, he was anointed to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, and to set at liberty those who are captive? Didn't Jesus offer forgiveness? Have you heard about Jesus? Sometimes we've got to be reminded, church, about who Jesus really is right? And when we do, it changes our life. So let's say a thought comes, I'm a mistake, all right? Well, you need to hear about Jesus because the truth is, Jesus said you were chosen and adopted into his family, all right? Maybe a thought comes to you and says, I'm a failure. Well, you need to hear about Jesus because the truth is that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, church. Maybe the, maybe the thought comes to you and say, you know, I just can't change. 
well, you need to hear about Jesus because the truth is you are a new creation in Christ. The old things have passed away and new things have come, right? The, the, maybe you get a thought, I can't be forgiven. I've messed up so badly. Well, you need to hear about Jesus because Jesus says and prophesies over again, I came to take away sins. Isaiah says that I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. You're remembering your sins. He's not remembering your sins anymore. Have you heard about Jesus? Have you heard about Jesus? I am inadequate. I can't do anything right. Woo, have you heard about Jesus? The Bible says that Jesus said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on you. I'm going to pour out my spirit. and You're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses. Have you heard about Jesus? Romans 12, 2 says this, do not, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What this is saying is that in order for our minds to be renewed, we can't conform to the pattern of the world, all right? We can't conform to the world's way of thinking. We can't conform to what we think, our preferences, and we can't conform to what others have said about us. We can't conform to what the devil said about us. The enemy's always lying. He's a father of lies, and he will lie to you about your identity. He'll lie to, lie to you about your past. He'll lie to you about your adequacy in Christ. He'll lie to you about what Christ has done for you as if it's ineffective. It's not ineffective, right? What Christ has done is, is, is life-changing, and yet so much, many times our thoughts aren't changing. Our negative, toxic thoughts are, get a hold on us because we're conforming our thoughts to the pattern of this world, right? Right. And so the most whole, this, let, me, let me tell you something that um, has really helped me. You guys, my thought life over the years, there's times where my thoughts have ne- led me to depression. There are times when my negative, toxic thoughts have led me, me to feel hopeless, right? And God, and the most helpful counsel I received is to the feeding these thoughts where when a thought comes, you just have to think, well, that's a thought, and that's all it is. It's just a thought. That thought does not have to define you. A lot of times we think, you know, but I've been through this, and I've been through this, and I've been through this, and our thoughts are filled with that. But listen, it's a thought, but it doesn't have to define you. Those thoughts, what, even your experiences in life don't have to define you, right? And it all depends upon, this counselor said, your thoughts are not that what you think in that moment. Who you become depends on the filter you put those thoughts through, okay? It depends on the filter. It's your focus. What do you put in your, fil- your thoughts through? What filter? All right, put those thoughts through the filter of who Jesus is, what he has done, the word of God, right? That is your filter. You see, if you have a negative filter, it will determine the way you see your life and see things, okay? You could have two people with the exact same experience and depending upon their filter, get get something totally different out of it, all right? So if you have a negative filter, you're going to walk into church and you're going to go, eh, you know, the people weren't that friendly, and the worship was kind of loud, and the sermon was too long, and, you know, I, I, I just didn't get a lot out of it. But if you have a God-centered filter, you're going to leave that church experience, and you go, those people were so friendly. I got so impacted by this message, right? The worship really touched my heart, right? You see, it depends upon your filter. It depends upon your focus. This woman in Mark 5 heard about Jesus. She ch- and she changed her focus, which changed her inner, inner dialogue, which changed her life. And the, and the result is she was healed of her affliction. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to change our focus if we want to change our thoughts. The second thing is to change our thinking, we need to change how we respond to those thoughts. Now, this is critical. This is really critical, all right? This woman with the issue of blood heard about Jesus, but she still had a choice to make. You guys, she could have stayed home, and she could have sat in that cycle of negative, toxic thoughts, but she got up, she walked out, and the Bible says here, 
that she heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. And for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. All right? So I love this. Pastor Craig Rochelle says, our life is always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. All right? If her strongest thoughts were nothing will ever change, she would have just stayed home. But her strongest thought in that moment when she heard about Jesus was, I need to go see that, see him. Whoever this is, what I'm hearing about him, I need to get as close to him as I can. So her strongest thought caused her life to move in the direction that she needed to go. All right. So it says here, she came up behind him through the crowd. Now I just, oh, I just couldn't believe this when I was meditating on this verse. This was not just any crowd, church. It wasn't any crowd. In Mark uh, 524, it says, a great crowd kept following Jesus and pressed him from all sides so as to almost suffocate him. Can you get the imagery here, right? There were so many people in this crowd, they were like this, right? If, if it was me, I would have been like, I can't, I can't do that. This crowd's too much. It, I mean, there was one time my husband and I and our family, we went to the Rose Bowl Parade it was suffocating. There was thousands of people, and we, we were in the front row of the Rose Bowl Parade. That's, I want you to get that imagery of this woman trying to approach this crowd that is so big, so thick, so packed together that Jesus felt like he was being suffocated, right? And yet, her strongest thought led her in the right direction, right? And the Bible says here, she came up behind him, got through the crowd, pressed through the crowd, did whatever she had to do. Nothing was going to stop her because her strongest thought was, if I just touch him, I'm going to be healed, right? It's so important, our thoughts and what, how we respond, right? Now, whether you have a promise you're still waiting on, maybe you have a prayer that still needs to be answered, I want you to notice something in these verses her thinking changed before she received her healing, <laughs> all right? It wasn't, I'll change my thinking once I get my healing. I'll change my thinking once I get my prayers answered. No, she changed her thinking before she even received her healing. And this is the critical thing. You guys, our thoughts determine the direction of our life. If you're, if, if you're in a cycle of these negative toxic thoughts, it'll determine the direction of your life. So we need to start with changing our thinking. I want to encourage you, church, as you do what we're going to do today in a few minutes, and you, you apply yourself and you work step by step to renewing your mind, Jesus will meet you there. He'll meet you there, and you're going to see a change in your life. So wrong thinking patterns come from our childhood, right? Come from bad experiences, and even though we can't stop the thoughts from coming to our mind, I think we can all agree, right? I mean, we're, we can't, all of a sudden we're walking along and a thought just pops into our head. Now, we can't stop that, but we can control how we respond to that thought. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. I want you to think of yourself like a fish in the ocean. And like this picture here. And I want you to think of that bait as the thought. You do not have to take the bait. You can choose to take the bait or not take the bait, right? You have a choice. You have a choice on which thoughts you're going to accept and reject. All right? We need to recognize our thoughts for what they are. They're just thoughts. Sometimes we think, but I, I have these thoughts because of the trauma I went through. That's true. We have, we've been through very difficult, hard things. I'm with you on that. But that still means that you can make a choice whether you're going to accept negative thoughts. All right? Remember, we need to hear about Jesus, right? You don't have to believe every thought that comes to your head. Every thought that comes to you is not you and it's not true because of Jesus, Right? Even though you've been through difficult things, Jesus is now in the equation, and he can change the way you think, all right? 
So when the negative thought comes, don't take the bait. Now, my husband and I were prayer walking the other morning, and I was sharing with him this message. And he said, you know what, Amy, it reminds me of? It reminds me of when you go on the computer, and you're sitting there, and you're studying, and then all of a sudden, this ad just pops up. What's that called? Clickbait. It's called clickbait, right? Clickbait typically refers to the practice of writing sensationalized or misleading headlines in order to attract clicks on a piece of content. Now, I'm sure you guys experience this too, where you're, you're on the internet, you're doing your work, an ad pops up, and you're, you're, you're having to look at that ad, but you don't want to look at that ad, and you're trying to find the X to try to X out, and they kind of fade it out, and they put it in a funny spot, and you're like, I, I can't get, I, where is it? How do I get out of this, right? And so this is what the enemy wants you to believe. He wants you to believe that you can't get out of these thoughts, right? You're looking, you're trying to figure it out. But let me tell you something. All you need to do is swipe right or click, right? Click that X. X out or swipe right, right? And, and this is the thing is it's not too late. It's not too late. I don't care if you've had years of negative, toxic thoughts. It is not too late. Jesus can come, and he can begin to uproot these negative, toxic thoughts. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5 says this, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. This verse is not saying that it only works on some thoughts. It'll work on these thoughts, but not on those thoughts. No, it says every single thought. The thought that you've been thinking for three decades, the thought you've been thinking for just a week, every single thought God has given you to Christian divine power to demolish that stronghold. You do not need to live with these negative toxic thoughts. Your greatest weapon is the word of God. Your greatest weapon is the word of God. What is this divine weapon? The divine weapon is the word. The word is the truth. The truth is what's going to take that lie, that stronghold in your mind, and as you meditate on that word, it is literally going to demolish that lie in your head. Now, it may take a little bit of time because some of those thoughts have been entrenched, right? Some of those thoughts have been there for a while. But I am telling you, if you will meditate on the truth, which we're, we're going to show you in a minute— and you start confessing it until you believe it, it is going to literally root out and demolish that thought. All right? So I want to encourage you with this, that sometimes our thoughts become so unhealthy, we need help to heal. You guys, God will work through his word. Everyone here, no matter where you are in your thought thinking, in your thought life, this is the weapon. This is the weapon that's going to demolish that thought. But you may also need the church. You may need trained counselors. You may need professionals in your life. That's okay. I have been to uh, professional counselors several times in my life because of the strongholds in my mind. And, and God used people that are trained in this to help me walk this out. And so I really want to encourage you. We have Victory Weekend coming up. If you didn't get to sign up, please sign up, because we will take you through some of these negative, toxic thoughts and see freedom come in your life. And if you feel like you need even more, I want to encourage you to find a, 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 a professional counselor, a Christian counselor who can help you dissect these thoughts and see you become free. So God's plan is to demolish every stronghold in our mind. And how he does it is we, de we identify the strongest thoughts that are keeping us back from the life that God has for us. God has an abundant, amazing, fruitful life for you, a blessed life for you. But what is the thought that is keeping you from the destiny that God has for you? I can't do it. I'm going to fail again. I'll never change. I'm worthless. I'm a mistake. I'm not enough. I'll never get close to God. What is the strongest thought that is keeping you from the destiny that God has for you, the purpose he has for you? For this woman, she heard about Jesus. It changed her inner conversation, 
And it moved her life in the direction of reaching out, touching Jesus, and she was healed. And her life was changed forever. God wants to change your life, but he needs to start with your thoughts. God needs to start with your thoughts. Philippians 4, 8 says, we must fix our minds, dwell on, focus on whatever's true and honorable and right and pure and lovely. God's truth is the antidote for negative, toxic thoughts, right? So what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? I want to take you through a, um, not only do we need to put our, change our focus to change our thinking, but we need to change our response. And I want to give you a chance to today make a step to respond to what I'm sharing with. So on your seat is a little sheet here, and it says, what are you thinking about? Everybody grab that. If you don't, there's a few here on the front row, too, if you don't have one near you. And so I would... I would like you, as a step of faith to what I'm sharing, I would like you today to actually work through this little worksheet, all right? And at the top it says, how would you describe your thoughts right now? Anxious or peaceful? Negative or positive? Unhealthy or healthy? And just put an X where it is. Maybe, maybe you're, you've had a lot of anxious thought lately, lately, so you'll be more on the left. Maybe you're... you're uh, my, your thoughts have been healthy, so just more to the right. And then ask this question, what is the biggest mental stronghold right now that is holding you back from the life God has for you, for the abundant Christian life? What is that strongest thought? I want you to really think about that. You might have a few, it's okay. But write that down, the biggest mental stronghold right now that is holding you back. You know, maybe it's, I can't get close to God, right? I'll never succeed, Whatever that is. Well, what spiritual truth from God's word demolishes that stronghold? All right? So you're going you're gonna to go to the word of God, and you're going to find a verse that is going to be basically dispel that lie, right? That's a lie. It's not true. Everything we just shared, that in, in these, these lies from the enemy, that is not true. That is not you. Those are just thoughts that are coming to your head. And so what you're going to do is you're going to find a truth in the Word of God, and you're going to write it down. Then you're going to write out a confession based on the truth in the Bible. God, I thank you that your Word says that your sheep hear your voice. I thank you that you say that I can be close to you, that the word of God says that, Jesus, you came to have a relationship with me, that you want to be my friend. And so, God, I thank you that I can be close to you. I thank you that I can hear your voice. I thank you that I can sense your presence. I thank you that I can have a relationship with God that is real and beautiful, and I can experience the beautiful presence of Jesus because this is what your word says. And then I want you to say it, and I want you to confess it until you believe it. All right? Thoughts will not be unlocked in our, in our, um, in our brains unless we do the work, the beautiful work of actually making choices to say, I'm going to respond in a way that's from the Word of God, right? I am going to take this thought. I am going to going to find a a truth in God's word that's going to break and demolish that mental stronghold. And then I'm going to confess it in the word until I believe it, right? And so I want to pray for you right now. Pastor Dave's going to come up. We're going to pray for you. And uh, church, I love you. I am right there with you. The battlefield is in the mind. And I and myself have had to struggle with my thought life and the battle for the mind. This past two years, even this past two years of COVID, has been very hard. And my husband and I have had to prayer walk around the neighborhood just to have our, have, have our thoughts be faith-filled. And so we're right here with you, and we, we believe that as you do this today, starting today, and continue on with these thoughts, that God is going to do a work in your heart. Yeah, I mean, there's been times... Yeah. Amy knows that most of the time I'm upbeat, I'm positive, I'm always smiling. I think I smile in my sleep, and uh, uh, even when I'm not awake. But there's been times where, you know, I've walked around with a frown, and a frown on the inside, or I've been anxious, or I've been nervous. And you know, every single one of those times where I have been discouraged, or I've been distraught, or I've been despairing, I've noticed one thing, you guys. I've been listening to something other than God's Word. 
See, let me phrase it another way. There's been times where God has said to me, I've been despairing or I've been down, and God would say, Dave, who told you that? Who told you that? Come on. Who told you that that's, this is the way it's going to be? Who told you that you, whatever, can't write a book or that you're not going to be able to go plant a church or that you're not going to be able to, you know, have children? We were told one time after our first one, that's all. You're never going to have any more. I was depressed for weeks because I wanted to have a lot of kids. Went home. I was laying on my bed crying. God's like, what are you crying about? Not, to, not the most compassionate response or that I sensed from God, Pastor Fred. What are you crying about? It's like, God, you heard the news. He's like, who told you that? Did I? Then the next question, God, did I tell you that? Woo, did I on. say that to you? Come on. Church, please listen to me today. Listen, for you who are single and, and you're thinking to yourself, I'm ever going to get married. Let me tell you something. That is not of God. Did God tell you that? For you that don't have a job and you're like, I'm always, I'm always going to be broke. I'm never going to. Did God tell you that? To you who are sick or, 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 or you're physically, you're hurting, you're in pain. And you're like, man, I'm just going to have to learn to manage this for the rest of my life. I want to ask you a question. Did God tell you that? Yes, come on. Because when I look in the Word, I see the answer for every single problem that's out there. Christian, today, let God lift you. Let His Word come in and break up all of that negativity. You guys, we are to live in the world, but we're not to be of the world. What does that mean? We've got to let the Word of God seep into every pore of our being and change us. You guys, every single one of us is fighting a battle. It's a battle in our minds. Yeah, so good. But I want to give you hope. Amy and I want to give you hope today. The greater one lives inside of you. And he's speaking to you and he's telling you, no, you're not going to be single. Or you're not going to be sick. Or you're not going to be, give me another S, someone, sad. No. I haven't told you that, daughter. I haven't said that, son. But let me tell you what I'm saying. And you guys, what we're telling you is so critically important. You have to find scriptures. This is why the Bible is so powerful. You find an area where you're struggling in your thought life, and you find scriptures that apply to that situation. And then you declare them out loud. You know, when I different times with Amy, even over the last two years. You know, it, it's been discouraging. You guys, let's, let, you heard Pastor Ben's message last week. I mean, in 2019, we were thinking about a whole different world. And then all of our worlds, were, in a sense, were caved in. We had so many things from racial tension to, to a global pandemic. Now we've got the threat of a global war, you guys. How are we going to overcome that? You have to take the word of God. God, I thank you that today, I, I don't have to be anxious about anything. You see, this is Philippians 4. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, I'm going to let my request be made known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. I thank you, God, today. I'm not going to be anxious. You see, you have to take the word and apply it to your situation. This is what we're trying to get to you to, you guys. Your life will always go in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Your life's always going to go in the direction of your strongest thoughts. But let me, you're like Pastor Dave, these thoughts are so strong because I've been in this condition for 12 years. You guys, just one new thought that comes from God can break you out of 12 years of pain, of isolation, of feeling like no one else knows. Just one time where you open up your heart and mind say God I'm open can we do that right now yes, Jesus, would you do me a favor close your eyes and go before God and say God I'm open, open I'm open to hearing something from you yes, Jesus. I'm open God like this woman who was in pain isolation who was shunned who felt alone for 12, I am open to you coming in 
if I can just focus on you. Jesus, if I can just touch you. Or better yet, Jesus, if I can just have you touch me. If I can just get a touch. Jesus, right now, with every eye closed, would you touch every person? Do me a favor, just lift up a hand. You're saying, God, I've, I've had some toxic thoughts. I've had some debilitating thoughts. Just everybody, just close your eyes and lift up a hand. Because right now, as you lift up your hand, just everybody put your hand up. I know this is, applies to everybody here. Just let Jesus right now. Jesus is walking through this auditorium. We invited him here this morning. Trust me, we did. So he is here with us, and he's touching. Just reach out and receive touch from the Lord. He is here. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, I've got great things for you. You're not finished. It's not over. He's just getting started. Oh, let me tell you something, church. To use the quote of a, of a, of a song, this party is just getting started in here. What Jesus has for you is just beginning. Come on. Say, Lord, I believe. I believe. You have nothing but good, you have nothing but good for, me. for me. You're a good God. You're a good God. I will taste. I will taste. And I will see. And I will see that the Lord, that the Lord is, good. is good. I receive. I receive your goodness. Your goodness. I give to you. I give to you every toxic thought. Every toxic thought. Every bad memory. Every bad memory. Every painful situation. Every painful situation. I hand it to you. I hand it to you. And God. I ask you now, Lord. And I ask you now, Lord. Fill my mind. Fill my mind. My heart. My heart. With your living. With your living. Abiding. Abiding. Healing. Healing. Word. Word. I receive it now. I receive it now. In my soul. In my soul. Which is able to save me. Yes, receive the word implanted which is able to save your soul. We hope you enjoyed that video. We're always posting new content, so go ahead and click the subscribe button now to subscribe to Every Nation City Church channel. God bless you.